Hi friends, it's Nathan, a third year pharmacy student studying at the University of Waterloo. Welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel. So this is the first study vlog of 2023. Can you believe it? I don't even know how many I did in 2022, but I'm feeling in 2023, there's gonna be even more. So look forward to that. But today is Wednesday. I have a clinical OSCE lab in the afternoon, but the morning's gonna be studying, the afternoon's gonna be studying, you know the drill. It's gonna be a productive day overall. We're gonna start with breakfast and and I'm feeling avocado toast, so let's make that. So we're gonna try this avo toast. I had Mexican food yesterday, so I had some leftover of their like homemade chili sauce. So that's what's on top of it, and I'm really excited to try it. So we got rye toast, and then it's old age cheddar. We have our avocado with everything bagel seasoning. Then we have pan fried turkey breast slices, and then we have our runny egg, and then black pepper and the homemade chili sauce. So let's give it a try. Mmm. The chili sauce is like kind of sweet. So it's like more sweet than sriracha, but it's good. I finished eating and I'm now just waiting for the bus. I am waiting for the very last moment to walk out of my apartment because I do not want to be standing at the bus stop unnecessarily today. It is, get this, negative four degrees fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees celsius today like that is insane no human on this planet should have to withstand temperatures like that and i'm just dreading it i know my face is gonna split off literally when i step outside but the benefit is is that it will definitely definitely wake me up and i am feeling a little bit tired i'm not having my coffee until i get to campus so this will be nature's coffee <laughs> I stand corrected. It is freezing. I usually don't like wearing my hood because it flattens my hair, but today it's just not possible. I have to wear it. And can you see how red my face is? Got my coffee and we're just gonna find a place to get settled with work. Also, look at this weather. It's kind of nice like when you're inside and it's sunny. I can't say the same about being outside. Let's just get our day started. I need to go through emails, admin. I need to pay my rent because it's the first of the month and as well as submit some documents for insurance. So very adult, very mundane, boring stuff, but things that need to be done and want to get it done out of the way so that we can just focus on the studying later. So let's um, be an adult and let's get those errands done. I am embarrassed by how long I've been putting off my insurance claims. Like the fact that it took literally like 10 minutes to do. And in my head, I was like, no, it's gonna take so long. I'm gonna have to fill in pages of documentation and paperwork. Like I, I don't wanna do it, but then I did it and it was the easiest thing ever. So I feel like sometimes adulting is so intimidating, but it really isn't. But now I'm gonna actually start studying and doing work. So. I need to figure out what is happening in today's lab. I have no idea what's going on. I know that it's worth 10% of my final grade. So let's take a look at the instructions and prepare for it. So the lab isn't bad at all. It's medication evaluation and documentation. 
So it's a group assignment. We are given a prescription and as pharmacists, we have to evaluate it for clinical accuracy. So is the drug the best drug for the patient? Is there an interaction with their other medications? Is it indicated? Is there some other issue that we need to solve at the time of receiving the prescription? And then we have to document it using like SOAP notes, which stands for subjective, objective, assessment, and plan, which is just how health professionals usually like to document. That's the kind of format we follow. And then once you document it, that gets submitted and that will be worth our 10%. We have access to our resources so we can look up things like dosages and interaction checkers and all that stuff. It's really calm because we have group setting, we can collaborate, we can discuss. I'm pretty comfortable with this, so let's just uh, move on to the next task of the day. I just got some very exciting news. If you're a pre-med or medical student, something is happening mid-February and you're gonna wanna be a part of it, so listen up. Lecturio is having a self-assessment week where students can measure their preparedness for the USMLE as well as get first-hand experience in that simulated testing environment. I've talked about Lecturio before, but they're an all-in-one learning platform that allows students to master pre-med, medical, pharmacy, and nursing concepts. This opportunity will allow you to get the highest score possible, and I want you guys to be successful. Lecturio self-assessment is based on the latest NBME standards and includes 160 case questions divided into four blocks with each block 60 minutes long, representing exactly like the real USMLE Step 1 and Step 2 CK exam. You guys know how much I emphasize the importance of practice exams, and with such a high stakes exam like the USMLE, you have to not only know the content, you also have to be prepared for the testing environment. I am a victim of test anxiety and it really, really sucks. And you guys have seen it on this channel, but this assessment will actually ease that anxiety. It will get you comfortable with test taking. After completion, Lecturio will give you a three digit predicted score, which you can then use to compare your performance with previous assessments. And that's how you're going to identify your weaknesses. Here are the key dates to mark in your calendar. Registration closes February 19th and the actual self-assessment week runs from February 20th to 20th. 27th, with your marks being released on March 2nd. Click the link in my description box to register for Lecturio Self-Assessment Week. It takes less than a minute and I don't want you to miss out on this opportunity. Go sign up and ace that USMLE. So I kind of got kicked out of the room because they were using it. So I found a table and a chair and I really just set up camp in the middle of the hallway. <laughs> and a professor walked past and she greeted me and she didn't say anything so I think it's fine. But overall it's actually a pretty good spot. Like it's there's the light there and it's open concept. It is a little bit loud though. I'm gonna work anywhere I need to. I've worked in a stairwell, I can work in a hallway. Y'all already know it's Anki time. So this whole month is infectious disease. So last week was STIs. As you can see, we covered those topics. And then this week is skin infections and we're gonna do skin abscess therapeutics right now. Infectious disease is widely regarded as one of the most difficult blocks for any student, farm students, med students, nursing students, whatever. It's just really, really complex. For some reason, so far it doesn't seem too bad. Like there's not a lot of content, but I think the challenge is, is applying it. So when it comes to actually exams, being able to figure out which antibiotic to use, keeping in mind resistance and the root of administration and adherence and all these things and like collateral damage, it gets really, really complicated. There's no straight answer when it comes to uh, solving infectious disease issues. So that's where the trouble is gonna come. But I'm just gonna try to prepare as best as I can. I don't know exactly my strategy. I think I'm gonna kind of figure it out as I go, but let's make some Anki cards. If you guys also wanna know my technique with Anki, I will link it above in a video here for my tutorial. But let's uh, get on to making some cards. I have my lab in 20 minutes, so I'm just gonna quickly heat up my lunch, eat it, and then head off. Because it was recently Chinese New Year, my mom made this vegetarian Chinese dish. We have the vermicelli, Chinese cabbage. These are two different types of mushrooms, bean curd. It's super good, I wish I had some sriracha that I could squirt on top, but this will do. This is what I wear for my labs. I got my white coat, my name tag that says Nathan W, pharmacy student. This is uh, the fit. I literally feel so confident whenever I wear my coat. Fall 
just finished with the lab and it went really well. So there were three prescriptions that we had to evaluate. And with each prescription, we were given the patient profile. So the name, the age, the height, weight, what medications they're on, what health conditions they have, any lab work. And then using that information and what we know about the prescription, we have to evaluate and see what the problem is and then how we're going to correct that problem. We call those problems drug therapy problems. Basically, once we identify the DTP, that's the short form, we come up with a plan. So whether that is to change the medication, change the dose, add an additional therapy, it's kind of a puzzle really. And it was very nice because we were working collaboratively, we could discuss and there was this one DTP that I saw, and it was an aha moment. We were like, what is wrong with this patient? Like, this seems like everything's okay. And then I realized, and it clicked. I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't work. Once we found that out, we just continued with our plan. And overall, it was a really good lab. So now we're going to go back with studying. So let me take off this jacket, and then we will get back to the desk. I'm taking a break, so I thought while I take the break, I'm going to show you a few things that I picked up this month. The first one is this key case from a brand called Exter. Super minimal, fits my aesthetic, it has black leather and stainless steel, and it basically just keeps my keys organized and avoids scratching things in my pocket. Another thing I got from the same company is this key tracker. Basically, I put it in my backpack so if it was ever to get stolen, I would be able to track it via my phone. And you can put this in your keys, wallet, anywhere, and I just think it's super good. Theft rates are really high, especially for students on campus and everything. If you're interested, I will link them below, Exter. You can use code NathanWu for 35% off. But I'm gonna continue with my break and then we'll get back on once I'm studying. This week is all about infectious disease, specifically skin infections. And so I am going to be reviewing my slides on cellulitis. And while I do that, I'm going to be eating my yogurt as a snack. I'm really struggling on figuring out a strategy to learn this material. So these are all the different antibiotics you can use for cellulitis. These are her slides. They're very minimal. And she talks a lot about what's best, the doses, the safety indications, all that kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to use her guide as a base, but then I'm going to add the information that she's talking about in here just as little bullet points. And I think that is probably the best way to go about this. But we'll try it out and we'll see how it goes. I finished my table and I'm really proud of it and it actually made a lot more sense when I was able to interpret this on my own and make sense of it. So it is in chart format of the different antibiotics. So the green highlight is the best therapy for oral and the star is the best best in the ideal situation. So the ceftroxyl BID there and then the blue highlight is the best for IV. So cefazolin is great, cloxacillin, penicillin would also be great and then we have Things just for easier identification. So nephrotoxic is purple, resistance is red, so you can see it right away when you look at the screen. And then the yellow highlight is what you do when you have an allergy to your ideal agent. So if you have an allergy to the beta-lactam, such as the psyllins or the cephalosporins, then you could go to macrolides or clindamycin. finished all my tables and they look so good. I usually don't use color, but for these I have to. So here we have cellulitis therapeutics. Next page we have skin abscess therapeutics. And then this is diabetes foot therapeutics. And yeah, really proud of how I kind of overcame and adapted my learning for infectious disease. Also, look how dark it is, yikes. I got everything that I wanted to get done today, which is so good. I've been on campus for so, so long. I've been here since the morning. So I'm excited to close the laptop. 
I'm now gonna head over to my friend's place because we're gonna have a night in, we're gonna watch a movie, we're gonna eat pizza, and just relax because the next couple of days and the weekend is gonna be very intense studying for this midterm on Monday. And I'll be filming another study vlog this weekend so you guys have more study dose motivation content to watch. We are gonna clean up and pack up and get going. I actually dislike staying on campus this late, but I know that I'm not the only one because literally I was walking past the fish bowls. Every single fish bowl was full with students in them studying. So that's always like a reassuring feeling, but like it's not really my goal to be studying this late. I try to end at five if possible, but obviously I had the time, so why not just go till later? So both pizzas here are thin crust. We have mushrooms, jalapenos, and beef crumble. And this one we got peppers, spinach, and mushrooms. And that is bacon, jalapeno, cheesy bread. And then of course the sauces, we got marinara. Can't go wrong with the garlic. Today has been such an eventful and productive day, so I think I'm happy with ending the vlog here. So if you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a like. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. And if you want to see more study vlogs, study advice, lifestyle vlogs, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to see more of my day-to-day -day life as a student, you can follow me on Instagram at Nathan.Woo. I also post a bunch of funny, relatable reels that you guys absolutely love. I'm also on TikTok at It's Nathan Woo, but that's it for me. I am so, so tired. My eyes can barely stay open. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.